Greetings from sunny Hawaii. First, let me thank Ambassador Goodman for opening his residence to these wonderful Boa scholars, their friends and family. And of course, every Boa scholar is also a Fulbrighter, having received the benefit of a Fulbright travel grant, and they are all now members of the worldwide Fulbright family. Mr. Ambassador, having served on the Fulbright Commission in Belgium for 23 years when I lived in Belgium, I can think of no other program that has done more to promote the relationships between Belgium and the United States. I now would like to thank all of the BOA scholars here and not only thank them but also congratulate them. And this, of course, would include all of the BOA scholars who are not able to make it here this evening. I want to thank you for who you are and what you've done. Every BOA scholar shares a similar profile in that each BOA scholar is committed to integrity, academic excellence, and is also committed to service above self. But I also want to congratulate you because the Harvard Boas Alumni Association is unique in that it is the first alumni association directly connected with a private scholarship fund. And for this reason, I want to thank all of the organizers of this wonderful initiative, which after I mentioned this to our friends in Cambridge, very much attracted their attention. And they would like to use your initiative as an example, which they would like to see followed by other individuals or organizations who might wish to set up a scholarship program and to interest them in also including with this an alumni uh, association uh, as you have done here now. I think at this point it may be appropriate to pay tribute to someone who actually started the Fulbright Commission in Belgium in 1948, Dorothy Moore de Flandre. All of us, of course, who have worked with Dorothy, as I did uh, for over 20 years, have appreciated her enthusiasm for the program, and I always benefited from her wisdom about international educational exchange. But I wonder how many of you actually know how it came to be that Dorothy came to Belgium in 1948. Dorothy actually was one of a group of very young and very talented mathematicians who spent the war years of World War II in the innards of the Pentagon breaking the Axis Code, which they did very successfully. And after the war, it turned out that a very close friend of hers and colleague in this program happened to be the daughter of Dean Acheson, who at the time was the Secretary of State in the cabinet of President Harry Truman. And so one day when she was visiting the Acheson family in their lovely Georgetown home, Dean Acheson asked Dorothy what she planned to do now that her wartime assignment had ended. Well, Dorothy didn't have any clear idea at that time, and so Dean Acheson mentioned to her that the American government was about to undertake a very significant educational and cultural exchange program 
sponsored by Senator Fulbright in the American Congress, and that the plan was to open uh, the first Fulbright commissions in Europe, and one of the very first would be the one in Belgium. So that is how Dorothy came to Belgium in 1948 and eventually became Dorothy Moore de Flandre. It so happened that in 1948, Douglas MacArthur uh, was first secretary of the embassy, and later he became the American ambassador. And in that capacity, in 1964, Ambassador MacArthur appointed me to the Fulbright Commission. Well, shortly after I became a member of the board, I realized that the finances of the commission were running down rapidly because uh, the counterpart funds that had been used to fund this program initially were rapidly running down and that the commission was reduced to granting just a very few travel grants and that many people actually had thought that the uh, commission had closed its doors. So I consulted my parents and we came up with the idea that it might be very interesting and useful if we offered a private scholarship to young Belgians and Luxembourgers who would be able to study in any graduate department of Harvard University. And we thought it would be useful to partner with the Fulbright Commission, which would grant travel grants to the successful applicants and would also do the initial screening. When I brought this up with my board and with Dorothy, they all agreed that this would be a good idea. So then the next thing that needed to be done was to make sure that Harvard uh, would join in this program and make it possible. So having graduated 10 years earlier in 1954 from the Harvard Law School, I thought it would be useful to begin this program uh, with the law school and their uh, LLM program in particular. So I went to Cambridge, got an appointment with Dean Griswold, and this was my first face-to-face -face meeting with the dean because when I was an undergraduate, I followed the unwritten rule to avoid the dean as much as possible because a summons to his office usually uh, meant rather bad news uh, for the invitee. Uh, I explained to Dean Griswold who I was, and then I explained to him uh, what the Fulbright program was all about, with which he was not familiar. And then Dean Griswold said, well, why in the world would any Belgian want to come to Harvard Law School and get an LLM degree? I then reminded Dean Griswold that in 1928, when he graduated from Harvard Law School, a bright young Belgian was just finishing his LLM degree, and his name was Pierre Wigny, who at the time of our meeting was the Belgian Minister of Justice. And I also said that a number of other very intelligent Belgians uh, were also interested in studying at the Harvard Law School. So the dean agreed with our plan and uh, said that, of course, Harvard would have the final say over admissions. So having obtained uh, Harvard's uh, permission, I then returned to Belgium and we were faced with a rather urgent task of finding a suitable candidate. We obviously didn't have time at that point to set up a search committee uh, and do uh, the kind of interviews that uh, all of you have experienced. Uh, we simply had to find a candidate. So Dorothy and I went over a number of files and we came up with the uh, name of Luke Skurman who had graduated uh, at the top of his class at the Leuven Law School and had just finished spending a year studying law uh, at the university in Rome. So I managed to find Luke and explain to him what our program was all about, and he agreed to be our first candidate. 
and to sweeten the deal, uh, I said that we would provide him, if he had successfully completed the program, with an all-expense paid trip to the United States. Luke then kindly invited me to meet with his family, and I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Luke's parents at their home, and I also had the pleasure of meeting his lovely wife, Janine. Luke and Janine went off to Harvard, and Luke did brilliantly, and uh, now we, we had a successful program because if the first candidate uh, had failed, our whole program would have been dead on arrival. Well, of course, all of you here and all of the Boas scholars have been winners and have done very well. And in fact, the program did so well that in, and in fact, uh, a number of the Belgian grantees uh, went to a number of the graduate schools at Harvard, including the medical school and of course the law school, School of Public Health, and also uh, the faculty of arts and science. A number of these very distinguished Belgians are now actually members of the Belgian Royal Academy. So having a, a successful program ongoing, uh, my parents and I thought that it might be interesting to set up a second scholarship which would be limited to the Harvard Law School, but which we uh, would be open to scholars from what we had determined to be the small countries of Europe, Benelux, Scandinavia, including Iceland, and uh, Austria and Portugal. And I think uh, the first Icelander in our program, uh, Ms. Selvig Olaf's daughter, was the first Icelander ever to go to the Harvard Law School. And of course, we now have a very distinguished group of uh, alumni uh, from uh, these countries, and I'm delighted that uh, the Honorable Imrogard uh, Reitinger, uh, the President of the Austrian Supreme Court, has agreed to join your board. Now in closing, I would like to mention two special cases which occurred over the two decades that I served uh, on the selection committee uh, here in Belgium. And the first one involves a young couple, uh, Hans van Haute and Vera van Papel, who had graduated uh, in the top of their class at the Leuven Law School, and who came to us and told us that they were engaged. And when we interviewed them, separately of course, each one said, if one of us gets the scholarship, then you should give it uh, to the other. As it turned out, uh, Vera van Papel got the Belgian scholarship, and Hans van Hutte won the international scholarship. And Vera went on to a very distinguished legal career, both in the private sector and also doing important work uh, for legal organizations in the public sector. Hans has just celebrated uh, his emeritus status at the University of Louvain uh, Law School at Leuven, and uh, he is now the president of the U.S. Iran Claims Commission in The Hague. The second rather unique case uh, which occurred, not surprisingly, involved His Excellency Luke Frieden. Uh, our keynote speaker this evening. Uh, Luke applied in the mid-80s uh, for uh, the International Legal Scholarship, having just finished his degree at uh, the Paris Law School at the top of his class. And while he was studying law there, he also did important work for Radio Luxembourg, which was based in Paris at that time. And he also helped the Luxembourg Prime Minister uh, revising the Constitution of Luxembourg. Well, we thought this was a really outstanding candidate, and we sent his application to Harvard with every expectation that he would be admitted. Well, 
imagine our surprise when Harvard came back to us and said that uh, they would give Luke a deferred admission only at Harvard. And uh, the reason they stated was that they felt that Luke was simply too young to uh, come to Cambridge and engage in the LLM program. Well, when we mentioned this to Luke, he, with his inimitable enthusiasm, went off to Cambridge University in England and obtained an international law degree there under Professor Lauterpacht. As coincidence would have it, Professor Lauterpacht's father, Sir Lauterpacht, who became a judge on the World Court uh, at The Hague uh, when he was a member of the International Law Commission in 1953, offered me to study under him at Cambridge under this same program uh, when I was the assistant to Judge Manley Hudson, my law international law professor at Harvard, who at that time was the American chairman of the International Law Commission. Well, Luke returned to uh, us in, in uh, Brussels, and we sent off his uh, application for the second time, and this time Harvard felt that Luke was old enough to come to Cambridge and uh, follow the LLM program there, which of course uh, he completed with his usual brilliance. And we all know about his subsequent career uh, when he also became the youngest member of the Luxembourg cabinet. Let me finish by thanking all of you once again for all you have done and express the hope that this program will always continue as long as Harvard and the Fulbright program exists. Thank you.